Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. We are Monazi, aka Sandra and Timo, and today we start a new mini series of little mini guides of different countries in Europe because we've been traveling for the past one and a half years and we've seen a lot. So we want to give you some information and help you to plan your trip. These guides are gonna obviously be around van life and how our experience traveling with our van through these countries was. Today we're gonna be talking about Norway. So without further ado, let's get into it. The video is gonna be divided in three categories. The first one is gonna be some points and we're gonna give you some rating on them. Second one is must know of its country and third one is going to be recommendations on things that we think are must-dos if you visit so let's go with the first category first point which is costs our rating goes from one to five and in this case cost is one being quite cheap and five being very expensive and for Norway we had to go with five all in <laughs> Um, definitely, I would say Norway is one of the most expensive countries in Europe. When you're traveling, this is definitely something to keep in mind. Food was quite expensive, campgrounds were expensive, activities and simply... Parking even was yeah. expensive. Yeah. yeah. One time we went grocery shopping, one of the first times actually, and we only filled our little tote bag and that was over 100 euros almost. So. Definitely something to keep in mind, maybe you need to do some budgeting or like some little plan if you're planning to go to Norway because it is definitely on the more expensive side of things. Next point, nature. And here Norway, well done, we give you a 4 out of 5 and you're asking why not 5? Simply because there's not a big variety within the nature. You have the breathtaking fjords that are amazing and you have also very nice forests but after a while you see yourself seeing the same things over and over again so um, we are a bit stingy here with our stars or in this case our little tree but the nature is absolutely beautiful we recommend to just stand by the fjord enjoy the view and be in solitude which we will discuss in a further point Point number three is people. For this, we went with a three. The thing is, Norway is a really big country, so actually it doesn't have a really big population. However, we did find that the encounters we had with people, they were nice, but nothing extra. I think during our trip, we have found locals that perhaps were a bit more chatty or a bit more warm to foreigners. So everything was nice, everything was polite, but nothing too out there. So we went with the three nice people, but at the end, Scandinavian is a little bit more serious. The next point, services. And here we give a three out of five because there are not so many services around, especially if you drive up north. You will see that there are no coin laundries and there are campgrounds, but they are very expensive and also not very extra. So sometimes you see yourself driving quite a while to find some, some things to take care of your van for some services so they're definitely there and you will not have trouble to find them but could be better we also um, had the thing where we drove to a few campgrounds and they were not even open because it was not yeah. season for it so maybe just check beforehand definitely for our next point we're gonna go with one that is actually quite important if you're living in your van and this is wild spots wild places to park without having to go to a campground or paid facility and for this we went with a 4 out of 5 the thing is that there is one law in Norway which I'm not even going to try to pronounce maybe put it in here that states that any individual has the right to enjoy nature and tend or come in nature of course as long as you are respectful with it so it's really great because you pretty much can park anywhere unless there is a sign that it is coming so most of the times we could literally just park anywhere and it was totally fine but with that being said Norway is a really wild untouched country and that meant that there were not a lot of options in terms of wild parking so most of the time the spots that were available were just on the side of the road which meant that your van would be shaking when someone would be driving so close to you and it was quite loud and not always you had the greatest view and the wild spots that were actually very nice in front of a fjord or in a forest were quite crowded with other campers because as I said there's not so many of them so they were really nice and it's really easy but not so many as in other places 
Coming to the next point, popularity, and let me tell you, the Germans absolutely love Scandinavia and this is also why we found mostly German number plates in campus within Norway. So, as Sandra just said in the spot before, it's quite popular for, for Germans to go there, but we didn't see so many other foreigners driving around in campus. So from a van life point of view, we give this point a 2 out of 5. So it's actually not super popular and super common that people drive up all the way to Norway. But um, you will see since there are not so many spots that it can get crowded and then you feel like it's maybe very popular. But it's definitely not as popular as, for example, maybe Portugal or Spain. Also, we saw a lot of local campus, a lot of Norwegian mm. campus. And we talked to some people and said that actually it's very common for people in Norway to have a motorhome because it's such a long country that sometimes this is the best way for them to travel around. So we have mostly Germans and Norwegian number plates. And the last point is weather. Of course, we're talking about our experience and we love warm, sunny places. Therefore, for weather, we gave Norway one point. The thing is that we spent a few weeks during the summer, Norwegian summer. And let me tell you, <laughs> I would be cold with this. We actually had to use our heater quite a few times and we had two meter high of snow. And we did a few hikes where we had to actually cross snow. So. That's not summer for me, let me tell you that. Unless you're really into maybe skiing or you like colder climates, we would not recommend to visit Norway if you are planning to have a lovely hot and sunny time. And not only the temperature is the problem because I think you can deal with colder temperatures, but the fact that it rains a lot, especially in the region of Bergen where we stayed, that is really like a bad combination of cold weather and raining all the time. So you have to spend a lot of time indoors or if you go out or your clothes are going to be wet. So it's a bit of a tough uh, thing, but if you don't mind it, Norway is beautiful, go for it. And in summer it's definitely very mild and in winter it's going to be very cold. But hey, maybe you like it and you're going to have a great winter or summer there. We are coming to the overall van life score in the rating. And we gave Norway a very, very solid 3 out of 5. Keep in mind that this is our point of view and we really enjoyed seeing Norway, but there are some things that have led us to give only 3 out of 5. So Norway, thank you for having us and we move on. So now that we finished the rating part of the video, we're going to start the second part of the video where we're going to share with you some things that you must know if you're planning to go to Norway. The first one is fresh produce, vegetables and fruits are not so easy to find, of course, because of the climate, it's not so easy to grow these things there, so it's not a local product. And if you're like us, where pretty much 90% of our diet is vegetables and fruits, it was not really great or easy to find nice produce in the supermarket. And they were also quite expensive. Whenever possible, we like to buy local produce, go to farmers markets and try to enjoy whatever is local from the place. However, we found that in the supermarkets, most of the vegetables and fruits were coming from Spain or Portugal or some other places in the southern part of Europe. So this is something you must keep in mind. The next thing we are talking about is tolls, because when you drive through Norway, you're going to find yourself taking a lot of ferries because you want to come from one side of the fjord to the other. And if you wouldn't take this ferry maybe for half an hour or whatever you would have to drive around for like 10 hours so you save a lot of time and money you don't have to drive so much and don't use so much petrol and here it sometimes got a bit confusing so when you drive onto the ferry you can pay sometimes on the boat on the ferry itself so you can also sign up for a pass that allows you to take all the ferries within Norway and the third option is that they scan your number plate with a camera and they send the bill to your home address. So mostly we did the third option where we didn't do anything and uh, we just got scanned by the camera. Also in Norway, there are a lot of tunnels. So sometimes you also have to pay tolls there, but same principle, most of the times you get scanned with your number plate and get mail. Fun fact that we found out while we were in Norway is that Norway has the longest road tunnel in the world. I Is it didn't like know that. 50 kilometers or something? I'm not sure, but you will see it. <laughs> <laughs> we drove through it, so yeah, a lot of tunnels and they look quite futuristic. 
with lighting inside and, and even a rest area within yeah. the tunnel because it's so long and roundabouts beautiful. inside of a tunnel that was also beautiful My <laughs> another point that is important for you to put in your must know list is that there are not so many petrol stations in Norway especially when you're driving through the mountains sometimes you find yourself driving for hours and they always say that you should not start long drives without a full tank because you might not find the next petrol station after a few hours and in those mountains sometimes you don't even have any reception so you could be quite screwed so always be prepared when you are planning on long drives that you have enough petrol or that there is a petrol station on your way the next point just a little info actually there's not much to say about it norway operates in their own currency which are norwegian kroners and it's a very cashless society so you can pretty much pay anywhere with a card which was really helpful because we also pay mostly everything on card and another fun fact actually is not so fun but there's <laughs> not so much wildlife going on in norway and that is due to a lot of hunting that was happening in the last uh, century so it's really weird that once you're in sweden you have like more wildlife but as soon as you come over to norway it's a bit less i mean of course they have still a lot of uh, animals in the forest but not as much as for example in the neighbor country of sweden and finland and finland and we come in to the last part of the video part three where we share with you some recommendations and master activities that we did or have would done. love we would have done. <laughs> yeah we had the time to do if you're planning to visit Norway. The first thing that probably most of you have heard about is the midnight sun and the northern lights. The thing is that during summer, the sun sets almost at 1 or 2 a.m. And especially if you go really north. It barely sets. Yeah. yeah. So this was actually, we thought we were going to love it because we are definitely sun people. But it was really weird trying to sleep in your bed with light coming all over the place. And somehow, of course, your inner clock it's a bit like what is happening you know i want to sleep but it's sun outside so it was definitely cool for the first couple of days but then it got a bit weird <laughs> sadly we didn't get to see the northern lights i think we were not not enough oh it was also not the, the time it's of the not year. the season it's yeah. always uh, in the winter months when it's very dark you can see them and norway has one of the best spots in the very north and, and around lofoten where you can see them very well if you have the yeah. chance yeah to go there during the proper times for it we would highly recommend this is definitely on our bucket list and we can't wait to see it the next recommendation what you definitely should do in norway are all the hikes that norway offers because they are pretty amazing and we got to name the big three that you probably heard of which are kierak the pubic rock and Trotunga. so the pubic rock is a quite easy hike the kierak is very challenging because of uh, the steep elevation and the Trotunga, we haven't done it, but it's very long. I think it's around 20 kilometers or something, or 18 kilometers. I think it's like 8 to 10 hours, people say. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you need some time. It's, it's pretty flat, but very long. So yeah, this is the one we skipped, but the other two we can highly recommend. They are absolutely breathtaking and beautiful. And most of you, if you're a hiking fan, you probably know about the app, but the app All Trails will show you all the best hiking trails in your area so this is something we discovered through some friends we made in Norway and we use this app uh, quite often and I was a bit sad that we didn't discover this app a bit earlier because it's really helpful another amazing thing that you only get to see probably in places like Norway are glaciers actually fun fact Norway has one of the biggest or the biggest glacier the biggest, in Europe yeah. can't remember the name we put it in here but it's actually a very nice hike. Um, was it like one hour, Marle? The name is Jostedalsbrenn. It ah, came back to me. There you go. Yeah. It's a very nice hike, super easy. I think it was like an hour, an hour and a half. Yeah. And then the view is just breathtaking. It's really special and we would highly recommend to do it if you get the chance. And actually there were other different little hikes where you can spot um, little, are they called arms? Yeah, of like the different arms of the glacier. <laughs> yeah. So definitely, um, yeah, if you can, go check it out. It's really spectacular. Another thing that you should definitely do in Norway, and it's very obvious, is spending time in Trankir nature. Since the population is not very high in Norway, you will definitely find some very remote spots where you're just by yourself enjoying nature. So this is something that you can do. And while we are talking about nature, there's a lot of water around and also a lot of wildlife in the north at least. 
so you can actually do whale watching there which we sadly didn't do because we were not north enough but some friend of us did it and they actually saw some whales so and dolphins right? and dolphins that's mm -hmm. uh, that's right so that's something you you can do if you are further north i would say past one time you definitely have the chance to do whale watching and definitely if you're around lofoten in that area very high up north so yeah go for it and continuing on the water topic actually the fjords are great spots to go kayaking if you follow our adventures for a while you know that for our Scandinavian summer, we bought a kayak that we took with us in the van and it was just breathtaking to take our kayak out and go in the fjords, beautiful, beautiful views and something that we highly recommend is also really easy to hire them or rent them in campgrounds and sometimes you even find like little free ones or like little boats on the sides of the fjords so if you get the chance, get on a boat, get on a kayak and admire the beautiful fjords from the middle Another activity you can do in Norway is skydiving because of their countless mountains they have there and peaks. Something we also didn't do because uh, yeah, it was quite expensive and also we went never in the right place for the right time. Weather-wise, it was stormy, rainy and then you don't really want to do skydiving. And since we are with rentals, you can actually also rent surf equipment because in the north of Norway I think it's called Hanuka Beach, if not we put the right name here. You can actually also go surfing. So some very nice outdoor activities that Norway has to offer. And as a last point, a lot of you might know the Lofoten Islands because they're quite famous and popular for as a holiday destination. But actually, we were told by the local that the real deal happens in Senja. I don't However know you pronounce it, but yeah. It's supposed to be pretty beautiful and not so packed as end of the Lofoten Islands, the other ones at the end. So we again didn't have the time to make it all the way up there, but definitely it's on the list. And we'll try to do it next time. And to wrap up the video, we're giving you five words in Norwegian that we think could be useful for you if you're paying a trip. Very simple stuff for your day-to-day -day life, just to give you a little help for your trip. You're gonna read the English one and I'm gonna try the Norwegian one. <laughs> okay, hello. Hello. Thank you. Tak skal du ha. Let's uh, try it again. Tak skal du ha. Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. Ha det. You're welcome. Vær så god. And the last one perhaps is not so useful for you in your trip, but it's relevant to us. That's gonna be subscribe. Abonnere. Sounds almost Italian, but <laughs> guys, thank you so much for watching the video. <laughs> thank you so much for watching the video. If you like this video, found it helpful, give us a thumbs up, abonnere to our channel, and we see you guys for the next guide. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> I didn't know you can do this. <laughs>